South Korea is renowned for its leadership in technology and high-speed internet. There were over 40 million active smartphone users in South Korea in 2023, out of a total population of over 50 million. According to a research journal published by the Korean Academy of Child Health Nursing, the country's children typically start using smartphones at the age of just over four and a half. The easy access to smartphones and the internet has become a double-edged sword, however, posing risks of technology addiction, especially among South Korean youth, particularly related to internet and online gaming. Therefore, the South Korean government has established a rehabilitation center for at-risk children in an attempt to prevent them from falling into addiction in the future. At 9 o'clock in the morning, in the rain, children are enthusiastically doing morning exercises. This is an internet addiction camp for South Korean youth. Here, it resembles a summer camp, despite the weather, with durations of stay ranging from one to four weeks, depending on the needs of the children who enroll each time. Children aged 13 to 19 are accepted because the government believes they still need guidance. Shim Yong-chul, the camp director, says that he considers those aged 13 to 19 as being underage and still in need of guidance. Once they turn 20, they become adults. This is how the age range for this camp is set. The camp accepts no more than 40 children at a time. Moreover, attending this camp is considered part of education, and doesn't count as absenteeism. During this open school semester, however, many parents fear their children might fall behind in their studies, leading to only 26 children attending the camp. The focus of this camp is enabling children to discover themselves and build positive self-perceptions. Upon arrival, each child writes down their desires and expectations and sticks them on the wall. They range from simple tasks, like showering twice a day, to higher goals, such as reducing gaming time. Some of these 26 children are from the same school, some are from others. Being children and having to participate in activities together for 24 hours a day means that they bond quickly, creating a lively and cohesive atmosphere throughout the camp. Activities such as reading, sports and outdoor activities are similar to those of a regular summer camp. The significant addition, however, is a strict rule. No touching mobile phones or computers for the entire duration of their stay. This may seem challenging for those who regard phones as almost an extension of their bodies, and internet signals are akin to having air to breathe. But with various activities replacing phones and computer games, they can be forgotten just as easily. Oh Sung Jae, a program participant, tells us that he used to play on his smartphone as soon as he woke up, during breaks and before going to bed. At first, he felt strange not using his smartphone. He shares that he later came to love everything about this camp, though, both friends and the activities. Every day, there are counselling sessions, both group and individual, to help children understand the harmful impacts of smartphone and computer addiction, which leads to self-awareness and self-control. <laughs> oh Sung Jae says he's trying to use his smartphone less. He has learned that excessive use can damage his eyesight, and he has noticed that his vision has not been clear lately because of it. This camp divides boys and girls due to the differing risks associated with mobile phone and computer addiction. The director of the camp believes that the girls tend to be addicted to social media, while boys tend to play more games. Therefore, he tries to tailor the program to suit the preferences and needs of each group. This rehabilitation center was established in 2014 after the South Korean government had conducted its annual risk assessment on children since 2005. 
The centre works together with schools, parents and the children themselves. The process starts with schools conducting a survey to identify children who may be at risk of mobile phone or computer addiction, focusing on students in grades 1, 7 and 10. The centre needs to differentiate between addiction and passion, as the latter may indicate an inclination that can be further developed. The camp director explains that if they perform confidently in the screening test, it might indicate a passion and a talent for gaming. If the test reflects feelings of insecurity, depression, particularly in conjunction with excessive gaming though, it suggests addiction. If you want to see more great content from all over the world, please like the video, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. Thank you. After that, the school will meet and discuss with their parents and introduce them to this rehabilitation centre before explaining it to the children and asking for their consent. If the children aren't willing to cooperate, nothing can be done. There are instances when children cannot complete the programme and request to leave early, however. In such cases, the centre will contact the community for assistance, as community involvement is often more engaging and effective. In severe cases, the centre may recommend medical rehabilitation in hospital instead. The cost of attending this rehabilitation camp ranges from 40 to 125 US dollars per person, depending on the programme duration. In cases of family financial hardship, the government provides assistance with the expenses. This approach represents just one of many attempts made by the South Korean government to prevent their youth from gaming and mobile phone addiction. In 2011, South Korea enacted the Shutdown Law, also known as the Cinderella Act. This law restricts access to online games for children under 16 from midnight to 6 a.m. Enforcement of this law remains challenging, as many children secretly use adults' identification numbers to access online games during prohibited hours. The Cinderella Act only regulates online computer games, leaving mobile and console games unrestricted. Due to the difficulty in enforcing the law in some cases, they decided to entirely ban all the games of some companies, such as Sony's PlayStation Network and Microsoft's Xbox Live. They ended up restricting their accounts to adults only. The shutdown law was initially introduced to safeguard children from the growing social problem of game addiction. Its efficacy has, however, consistently been called into question. Later in 2021, the government decided to abolish this controversial gaming curfew law. The Korea Times reported that the government acknowledged that the law was outdated, stating that it failed to adapt to the evolving gaming environment. The ministries of Education, Culture and Family highlighted the increasing dominance of mobile games, which were not subject to the curfew. This disparity contributed to a decline in the effectiveness of the system. So, the government decided to focus on providing greater flexibility and control to children and parents, rather than applying forcible unilateral measures. After exercising and participating in group counselling sessions in the morning, lunchtime is when all the kids get together. Mountain hiking in the afternoon is, however, cancelled due to the heavy rain. They decide to play with Nano Lego instead. Kim Young, one of the program's participants, says that he makes a Lego cake and cup. He prefers to start with something simple, since it's his first time playing with Lego. The small-sized Lego bricks require absolute concentration from the children. Additionally, it encourages hand exercise to stimulate the brain. The main goal here is not only to treat gaming addiction, but also to prevent it in the long term allowing the children to learn new things and practice self-control. Since addiction tends to recur, it's crucial for children to learn to change their behaviour themselves, to break the cycle. 
Another crucial source of help at this rehabilitation centre are the mentors, who regularly take care of the children. Each mentor is assigned to a group of three children and needs to stay with them 24-7 during their time at the camp to observe their behaviour and record changes. Li Seng Huang, a mentor at the camp, says that after spending 24 hours together, he begins to notice gradual changes in the kids. He tells us that he has to take care of many youngsters with different needs, which is probably the most challenging part. The observations from the mentors are then passed on to the staff, mostly postgraduate students who are researching related fields. They will adjust the activities and counselling to suit each child. Kim Young-il, one of the staff members, says he also used to be addicted to gaming, the internet and smartphones. He thinks it would have been easier if he had realised it sooner, though. While helping these kids, Kim Young-il has learned that it's crucial for them to realise the harmful impacts sooner rather than later. That's why he tries to help them. The screen-free environment, combined with everyone's care and attention, offers a new experience, pulling the kids out of the virtual world and into real life. This centre completely changes the perceptions of the young game addicts. As children engage in age-appropriate and enjoyable activities, the lure of screen-based games diminishes. The joyful and lively atmosphere, along with the right activities for their ages, underscore the importance of self-realisation, rather than solely blaming or banning technology. The centre and the kids here demonstrate that a caring environment and mutual understanding can help redirect their intense interest and overcome the allure of highly addictive screen games.